Hey there guys, I recently completed a test of sort of DIY or home type CO2 generators and it included you know, the yeast sugar homemade devices, uh, the mushroom bags, these small little cold CO2 canisters that you could use. None of them I found to be particularly effective. But one of the comments on that uh, video, and I've seen it in a few other places before, kind of intrigued me out of meaning to test it, which is basically hot CO2 generation. And you can do this at uh, uh, custom made um, or a purpose made um, hot CO2 generator, which is basically a little pilot light uh, run off uh, you no know, propane cylinder, gas cylinder. And um, you know, they're, they're quite expensive and quite bulky. Um, but one of the comments that were made was about why not try a candle, um, which I kind of dismissed offhand. And then uh, as I was searching around, thinking about doing this hot CO2 generator thing, I thought, well, pilot light and a candle, the same thing. Um, I must try this out and I can't, can't dismiss this thing out of hand. And lo and behold, I've been pretty surprised. Um, wait till you see this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a shocker to me. Um, so the setup, I've just got a little tent here. Just got a little succulents in it, just for display. Um, but I got two CO2 sensors. So one from the Tecro NL sensor. If you can see the screen there, it says uh, 640 ppm uh, CO2. That's the uh, sensor there. That's an expensive sensor controller. It's, I think it's around a thousand euros. So it, it's accurate. Uh, CO2 uh, sensors can be notoriously tricky to be accurate. And I've also got as a backup the Trollmaster CO2 sensor, which is hanging up here, at the top of the tent, along with the temperature sensor. And yeah, this is a four by two tent, so reasonable size tent. And I got a circulating fan in there just to to move it around. Uh, what I'm going to show you, remember now it's 684 and 680 on the two sensors, is I'm going to use two candles for kind of dramatic effect and light these up, close up the tent and let's see what happens. That's one candle lit, second candle lit, you can see it blown around, you might be able to see the flame blowing around there. So let's zip up and um, see how much it changes and how long that takes. Okay, one hand is zipping is not easy. Okay, so we're, we're not totally sealed up there. Um, the vents are sealed at the side, the zips, yeah, there's a little bit of gaps around the edges, so it's not totally sealed, but it's pretty good. And the fan is uh, connected but not plugged in. So we got about 20 seconds there. Um, now just to say on the CO2 generator, uh, the guys from Mother Nature providing these CO2 generators were unhappy with me. They thought I didn't do a fair trial. So I did test these and um, I did find that they generated some CO2. It was just designed by 8x8 and it barely raised the CO2 in a 4x2. Uh, so um, and that was with the air pumps and everything set up. So I wasn't that impressed with them. I don't think they're that good. But uh, hey, hey, look, look, look. Again, hopefully you can see this. Sorry for the reflection. Let's brighten the screen a bit. We are at 1026 already. And trust me, it's 939. That is gonna shoot up. Because I did it just before I made the video. And uh, yeah, I was absolutely blown away. Um, couldn't believe it came up so quickly. So this is not something I would recommend doing in terms of putting a candle uh, open into a tent. Um, you know, it's a hot device, it could cause fires, all that stuff. Uh, don't want you to be burning your houses down. But it's a very quick, uh, serious demonstration of a tiny little flame like that. And your CO2, it's now at uh, 11.38, so it's just climbing and climbing, 1074. Um, in fact, one of the things you need to worry about is too much CO2. So once you go over about 3000 ppm, it causes problems for the plants. You don't want to get going much over 1500. So regulating this is going to be a problem. You're going to have to maybe have, well, yeah, you're going to be trying to manage humidity, temperature, as well as CO2 with no automatic control of your CO2 device. So um, it's, uh, 
up for discussion and I'd like to hear the discussion about how to set this up where it could be safe and it could be controlled in some way that's the discussion so I'm looking forward to your comments on it and then I'm going to test it of course we will uh, we will set up we think is the best solutions that you can come up with and we will test and uh, thanks to the viewer for that question and the candles are much appreciated so you never dismiss these things you never know um, you know even the maddest thing or the silliest thing uh, could um, turn out to be a good idea so yeah talk to you later bye